Welcome to this episode of Lab Rat Scientific. Today, I want to talk about the importance of developing good critical thinking skills. Now, as a former NASA program manager, I was required to hire technical staff from my office, and I needed people that could identify problems, create solutions, and implement them before there was an impact on the program. Now, this required people to collect information, analyze data, draw reasonable conclusions, and make good, sound decisions. Now, this skill is needed by all sorts of employers, and it makes sense for us to develop good critical thinking skills. One of the things driving the creation of LabRAS Scientific was my desire to help teachers teach students critical thinking skills. Now, there are numerous perspectives on critical thinking, so what do I mean by the term? Well, to me, it means a systematic problem-solving process that involves four major elements. First, there's a collection of information, Second, there's the analyzing of the data. Third, formulating reasonable conclusions. So finally, logical decisions can be made. Now, the best way to achieve this is by active learning. And that's where the students are posed with a question and they have to actually figure out how to try to solve the problem. Now, I realize that this can be problematic for the classroom because that process can take a long time, but hopefully LabRat Scientific can help teachers achieve this. Okay, so now let's look at some simple examples of critical thinking. Now this first example may seem a little silly to you, but I like to use the example of the Bigfoot hunting programs. Now, you supposedly have three or four scientists running around the countryside trying to find that elusive Bigfoot. And in the middle of the night, they hear a crash and they automatically assume it's a Bigfoot. It's gotta be a Bigfoot. Even though they have infrared technology that shows nothing in the woods where the sound came from, they still draw that conclusion. Now critical thinking requires you to remove your bias and take your emotion out of the thought process. Now these TV shows show exactly the opposite. They make their decisions and their conclusions based purely on bias and their emotions. Now, this next example may be a little more scientific. Now during the next full moon, I suggest you have your students go out in the evening and watch the moon come up above the horizon. And they should notice a big, huge orange moon. And then have them make an observation about a half hour later and see what the moon looks like higher up in the sky. Now, they might think that the moon on the horizon is bigger than the moon up in the sky. So what the students need to do is come up with some way to collect some data to try to see if they can prove whether the moon is actually appearing bigger or not. I think they'll be surprised. So now let's go on and look at an example of a ball rolling up the hill. Now, as a critical thinker, you can't necessarily believe everything you hear or you see. You should always ask questions, try to gain more information, to try to figure out what's going on. So does it really make sense that this ball can be rolling uphill? So to make that decision, critical thinking involves collecting more information to try to help figure out what's going on. This may be hard in the case of a video, you only get to see what the photographer wants you to see. But maybe if you can get more information, you can draw some reasonable conclusions. So here's the additional information you need to make the proper conclusion. Now if you look at the track relative to the tabletop, it is indeed sloping upwards to the right. However, the table itself is propped up on buckets. And so the tabletop is actually sloping downwards to the right. Now the combination of the track and the tabletop actually creates a slightly downward sloping ball track. Now to fool the observer, the camera itself is on a tripod that's tilted on one leg. So it makes the camera parallel to the tabletop, giving the observer the wrong reference. So it appears that the ball is rolling uphill. So now you have this additional information, you can draw the proper conclusions that no, it's not possible for a ball to roll uphill, but it's possible to fool the observer to make them think it is. And my last simple example involves these things, your smartphone. Now these are great tools and they can do all sorts of things. They can give us instant access to all sorts of information. And of course, they all include GPS. Now, we gotta be careful and not become over-reliant on these things. One way to keep our minds sharp and to help develop our critical thinking skills is to learn how to read one of these, a map. The art of getting from point A to point B in the quickest or most efficient way or the most interesting way can help keep our minds sharp and help us hone our critical thinking skills. Now, it's my hope that LabRat Scientific will help teachers teach students critical thinking skills. Well, that about does it for this episode. 
I hope to see you next time on Lab Rat Scientific.